Good morning, Cleveland. I always wanted to do that when I saw that movie, Good Morning Vietnam. So I got a chance to do it. So good morning. You know, I want to um, talk about safety. I dropped my prop. So <clears throat> in 2014, 94 of our citizens were gunned down and killed. 11 of them were related to the Boys and Girls Clubs. That's a sad comment. This young man, Ray Sean, 26 years old, I can't introduce him to you today because he's dead. He was killed just behind at St. Luke's Hospital at 10 o'clock at night. He was the Pied Piper of children. He, had, he, he mentored hundreds of kids. He was positive in their life, and now he's gone. And he joined Lexus, and he joined Booker, and he joined Rashid, and he joined Herman, and he joined Tyree, all children that I have come face to face with. And I am tired of seeing children killed in Cleveland, and we need to change that. You know, you know you, the America, thank you. Today, 92 people will be killed in the United States in a civilized country where people claim to love each other. And that's, that's five times what will happen today in Israel. And so we have a crisis here today. And I'm tired of riding, riding around my, my towns and where I work and seeing teddy bears on, on uh, telephone poles. And I want to replace those monuments to death with monuments of life. I want to celebrate graduation. I want to celebrate new jobs. I want to see kids have a life. And that's really what's important to me. Now this may seem depressing, but there's good news in this. There's people, there's companies, there's hospitals, there's police, there's all coming together and starting to talk about violence as a public health crisis. And that means that things are going to get done and resources are going to be provided and we're going to see a better city and a better community. And I think that's a very positive thing. Now when I think about how we can do, how we all can help each other, I think about some more stories. And I think about what causes this to happen in our community. Well, certainly you know that there's a breakdown in the family. It's been going on for many, many years. There's also easy access to guns. I had a conversation with Tom Barris with three of our children. One was recently shot in the foot at an RTA station. And Tom said, uh, the kid said, how, he asked him the question, how easy is it to get guns? He said, well, Mr. Barris, why don't you run down to the McDonald's down the street, and by the time you get back, I can have a handgun here to show to you. And, and, and that's, the, the McDonald's was less than a quarter of a mile from our Boys and Girls Club. And why is it happening? There's a lack of hope. There's, there's kids that don't think they're ever going to live past age 18. I was at a meeting one time, and I brought a young man along, Blake Wheeler. And, and he was asked, you know, what do you want for your 18th birthday? And Blake said, I have it. I'm alive. And that was his hope, he, not to get a job, not to raise a family. It was to make it to his 18th birthday. But there's great things happening. Eric talked about it already. Our education system and how, what do we need to do together to make this work? Well, we need to start educating and caring about our kids from the time that they're born. Get them in pre, pre, preschool programs. Get them into positive programs. Mentoring. Every one of us in this community can lift somebody up. I think that positive connections with adults and mentors is the most important thing we can do as an individual, as a neighborhood, as a block. You know, block clubs are really a critical thing. And I have a, you know, a bias towards after-school programs. You know, we, uh, at a time, lost a little bit of funding and had to close our teen club at King Kennedy. When we opened it back up in 2013, uh, Andy Gonzalez told me that his crime rate in, in King Kennedy went down 24% from 2014 to 2013. He said it was because there was positive things going on in the neighborhood that kids got to do. So those are really important to me. You know, what's the reward for mentoring and, and lifting people up? And I just want to share something really personal. I was fortunate today, this week, to um, celebrate my birthday. And one of the young ladies I've been mentoring for a long time gave me a birthday card. And she said, Father is a noun, someone who cares and helps and guides you. And shared DNA is not required. She wrote me a note. She said, although I wish my real father would have loved me like you do, I still think he wouldn't have been the father or the one that you are. Thank you for always loving me, for telling me you love me, for, for cheering me up, for providing me, texting me, and encouraging me, 
for remembering my birthday, for never letting me starve, for always be, being there when I need, one, need to be there. And every one of us in this room can do that. <clears throat> and I just want to challenge you to do that, so thank you.